Hey guys, it's Liz. Welcome back to my channel. So I thought today would be a great time to do an Ask Liz Margaret video just because I know that there's a few new subscribers here and so I thought this was a great way for you to get to know me a little bit more and see the kind of topics that I cover on this channel. For today's video, I have so many great questions that people submitted from Instagram, also Tumblr, and just a lot of questions I have not been able to answer that I've gotten in the past and so we are tackling all of that in today's video. So if there is any topic or question that really piques your interest, feel free to let me know and I can do a longer blog post or video on it because I want to make sure I answer each question and that this video is not going to be so long. <laughs> and so let's not waste any time and get right into it. Okay, so our first question is one from Instagram, which says, being a Christian whilst also being a worker. So it's kind of a topic that someone had submitted that they wanted me to get a little more into. So being a Christian at work, I'm kind of taking it from an angle of how can we be good Christians while being at work, especially if you are in a non-Christian environment. So what first came to my mind is just the fact that where's your identity? And if your identity is solely in your work, it's going to be something that drains you. But if you see work as an opportunity that God provides so that you can fulfill his purpose in a certain place with certain people, then it becomes something that will fill you up. A verse that I thought of was Colossians 3.23, which says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Again, if your identity is in working for a man, seeking man's approval, seeking their favor, you're going to find that your endurance at work is not going to last. Work will be feel a little bit more like a burden because <laughs> it's not always easy, right? Wherever your work is, even if it's your dream job, it's going to come with challenges. And so if your identity is in your work, I encourage you to orient yourself in God. And remember your identity is in God first. And from that, you can pour into your work and you can work well as unto the Lord. Another thing is that I think a workplace is a great opportunity to honor the Lord in your social interactions. You are surrounded by people, perhaps people who don't even know the Lord. What a great way to be a light to those around you because you're spending so much of your day and your time with your coworkers, your boss, whoever you're around honor the Lord in your interactions? What's your attitude towards others? You know, are you showing love and patience towards others or not? So I do see other workplace as a great opportunity to follow the two greatest commandments to love the Lord and to also love others. And so use it again as your opportunity and not your sole identity. And so I hope that helps to answer that first question. So the next question is, what are some of your favorite Bible verses and why? I thought that was such a great question. It was actually something I had answered previously, I think on my Tumblr, but I wanted to answer this again just because I feel like my favorite verses change all the time. Um, so I do have one passage that I'm just going to use to answer this question. So it is Romans 5, 3 through 5. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So I love this verse in Romans because I think it's such a great reminder of God's intentionality. It allows us to see trials as opportunities where God is molding us for our good, right? God doesn't just waste our trials, the things that we encounter because we live in a fallen world. You know, God can use whatever you have gone through to build character, to build hope, to build perseverance, which are characteristics we literally need in this life. And so this verse to me is such a beautiful reminder of how loving God is, that he does not leave us, he does not forsake us. And in fact, even just the reference to the Holy Spirit here is such a beautiful reminder that God loves us so much and he literally gave the Holy Spirit to help us in this life, to guide us, to intercede for us. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> and so what a gift we have in salvation. And so I love this verse in Romans. It's one of my favorite verses and it's a verse that the Lord really put on my heart in this moment. 
but there's definitely a lot of verses that are my favorites. But that was a great question. So my next question is, what does your personal quiet time routine look like? I thought this was a great question too. And so I could break this down a little bit more in another video, but pretty much I like to read uh, whatever devotion I'm doing at the time. I love to worship and pray. So right now I am actually reading through the Bible for the entire year, as in like the whole Bible from start to finish. And I've never done that before, but it's something that I really wanted to do, especially this year. It just was on my heart to do, so we're going to do it. And with that, with worship, I love to play worship music. When I'm done reading, I love to sing along and worship the Lord and just declare who he is. And with that, I also like to go into prayer. I do keep a prayer journal. Uh, where I write down what I call praises and then my prayer requests. Praises could be anything about things I'm thankful for. It could be answered prayers. And then I write down prayer requests. I love to be very specific before the Lord. And I also love to just be reminded of the ways that he has worked in my life. And so I, I really treasure that time of prayer where I get to write things down and spend time with the Lord in quiet time. So that is my quiet time routine. So this next question I really love from Instagram, it is, how to really surrender all to God. I think this could be a whole video. It could be a series. Surrender is so important. And I think it's something that God has definitely taught me so much about, especially this past year. When I think of surrender, I think first of knowing who you are in relation to who God is. Sometimes we find it hard to surrender to God because we think we could do a better job or because we don't really trust God at the end of the day. So I think it's very important to first examine yourself and see, are there areas in my life where I genuinely find it hard to trust God? I think it's important to, to look at that and to be very honest before the Lord, like God, I'm finding it hard to trust you in this, in that, in my finances, in my future, whatever it is. Be very honest before the Lord. Um, because when you're honest before the Lord, then he's able to work with you. But if you are just harboring that inside, while God already knows your heart, it's going to be very challenging for you to know what needs to change. Now, with that, I encourage you to look at who God is. Because when you know who God is, when you realize that, and we might know who God is, but sometimes we don't know it on the inside. You know, we might say, yes, God is good. But then if we really believe that truly then why is it hard to give an area over to him because we think he's not going to do a good thing with it right and so sometimes we have to go back and write down attributes of god do a bible study on god's character because when you get it in and you constantly remind yourself of who god is it's going to be so much easier to surrender to him something else is i like to look at who god is in relation to my experiences. There's so many times where I had a great idea and it turned out to not be a great idea. And so when you look back and think of ways where God did better than you could have, maybe God closed the door, but it was for your good. That also helps you to remember, this is why I need to surrender to God because he truly knows best. You know, I think of um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. You know, sometimes there are things that happen in our lives that we don't understand why that is. But again, we're going to have a limited human understanding. And remember that we're going to live in an imperfect world. There's going to be times that come that are going to be very difficult. But if you remember who God is, remember that he can redeem. Remember that he can save. Remember that he can restore and heal. And when you go through this process, you find that surrendering becomes easier and easier for you. When you pray to the Lord, honestly, it's hard to surrender. He will meet you where you are and he will help you through the process. And so I encourage you to surrender because God cares for you. He loves you and he will help you through every step of the way. And so just, just continue to grow in him and spend time with him. And as you continue to grow deeper and deeper in your relationship with the Lord, and as you continue to fall so deeply in love with him and he shows you um, his plan for you and unravels that slowly, you're able to trust him more. And so I think surrender is a process. I feel like my answer was going in so many different directions. Again, I think this is something that could be delved into a little deeper, but those are just my initial thoughts on how you surrender all to God continue to pour into your relationship with God, grow in him, and 
as you do that, surrendering becomes easier and easier because you know he could do better than you could even do for yourself. The next two questions are kind of related, so I'm gonna kind of answer them in one compact answer. So the first question is how to stay positive in this social media era. And the next question, how to deal with comparison. So I felt like they're very much so related because a lot of comparison happens on social media. So first, let's tackle social media, okay? What happens with social media and why it's hard to stay positive is because we are looking online, seeing what other people are doing, what other people look like, and we're comparing ourselves. And we're saying, man, <laughs> I don't have that. I don't look like that. And I'm not doing that you feel like you're not good enough. Another thing is sometimes you look for validation, like, ooh, I hope I get 100 likes on this, or, you know, this person didn't like my photo, or this person, you know, we get caught up in seeking validation from people, and that is a wrong cycle. So the first thing I will ask with social media is where are you getting your fuel? Where are you getting filled up? Because if you are looking for social media to fill you up, you're going to come out very empty. And so when you are filled up by God and that becomes your source for your confidence and when you look to God and look to his word to see who he has called you to be and the names that he gives you, the fact that he loves you and that you are beloved to him, right? Then you realize that is my worth and my value. It is solely in God and, and his word is just filled up endless reminders of who you are in Christ. When you're filled up by that, suddenly everything else pales completely in comparison. And so look to God to get filled up in true validation and you will not be seeking it from anyone else or anywhere else. Now for social media, if you need to take a break, take a break, delete Instagram, delete Facebook, get off Twitter, whatever you need to do. Or if you find it continues to be a stumbling block in your life, get rid of it. it you know, it's not something you need to hold on to if it's not helping you in your walk with Christ. And so whatever idol is in your life, whatever stronghold is in your life, do what you need to do to get back on the right track. Now, I also think of a verse in Galatians 1.10. This is Paul speaking. One of my favorite verses, he says, for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. That is incredible. And so when you are trying to please man, it's going to be very difficult for you to please God. You can't serve two masters here. And so I encourage you, re-put your focus on the Lord. And that's how you're not only going to stay positive, but you're going to maintain a joy that is full because your eyes are on Christ. Now, the next question on comparison. So now how to deal with comparison? Let go of comparison. Comparison is a real distraction, and I think it's something that the enemy uses. I think it's something that the enemy uses to deceive so many people. Comparison makes you miss out on what God is doing in your life. Everyone is different. Everyone is unique. How could you compare your path to a completely different person's path? You have no idea their backstory. You have no idea what they've been through. And you don't even know what they're currently going through. I'm not saying everyone's secretly struggling, but to compare yourself is robbing you of being obedient to God and his purpose and his voice in your life. So cut it out. Another thing is comparison is just destructive. Stop envying those that you're supposed to be loving. We're not made to compare ourselves to others because it's going to build up hatred and disdain for people that you need to be loving and that you need to be seen as your brothers and sisters in Christ. I think of John 13, 35 says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And so if you're wasting your time comparing yourself to those, to the point that, again, it's going to lead your heart in a negative way, you're not going to be able to live as a servant of Christ because you're supposed to be known by your love. So instead of comparing love, instead of comparing, pray, pray for others, pray for those that you find yourself envying because it's something that when that takes root in your heart, it's going to wreak havoc. So it's something that I would encourage you to get rid of as soon as possible. So my last question here is why it's important to physically get up and gather together. Now, I think this question is kind of pointing at community and why it's important to um, be together in community. So what's something I'll say is that community is just vital in your walk with Christ, 100%. I think of Matthew 18, 20, when two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be. 
I will be present there. And so God can do wonders in community, even just two people together, what God does and how God speaks is just incredible. I also think of the book of Acts, one of my favorite books in the Bible. What's incredible about that book is that you see the early church, but you also see a great example of community. It's so important for us to fellowship with each other. And in Acts, you see when they gather together, when they fast and when they pray together, they get the same thing from the Holy Spirit. They are moving in the same direction. God is working in miraculous ways. People are getting saved left and right because they are operating in unity and so community is something that is so important in our relationship with the lord he created community he created relationships and so i encourage you to continue to go deeper in your community continue to go deeper in your church community and um, in the people that god places in your life love on them encourage those around you because god can do so much when we gather together and so i hope that answers your question so that is the Q&A. I had a wonderful time answering these questions. It was so much fun. If you wanna see more Q&As in the future, don't forget to leave an Ask Liz Margaret question below. You can comment or you can head to my Tumblr, lizmargaret.tumblr.com slash ask. Submit your question and I will save it for another Ask Liz Margaret video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video was encouraging to you. Don't forget to check out the blog, lizmargaret.com or follow me on Instagram the underscore Liz Margaret, where you can submit questions at any point and I will see it. And so I will see you in the next one.